Hello and welcome to this week's video. Uh, so this weekend I've got a market. It's the Netheredge Summer Farmers Market. It's in Netheredge anyway, and it's normally a quite a popular market. So I thought I would film my process um, of getting ready and then I'll film a bit of the market as well, because actually I've got quite a lot to do. Um, so I've got to get all of my cards out, I've got to find some way of storing them, I've got to get my marquee, which Currently, because we're in the middle of building works with our cellar being done, we've, it's been in, in a storage facility, so I need to go, go to get the marquee, all of the weights, I need to get my tables, make sure I've got that ready, I need to get my money sorted, so I need to make sure I've got enough money to give people change, I've got to get all my stock sorted. So I've got my don't forget list for the morning because I'll always forget something and have to double back usually uh, and I've got my to-do list before the event so I've got to change a bag of 20 pounds worth of a bag of 20 pounds worth of one pound coins I need to change that into 50 p's because I've changed my prices recently this is something to bear in mind actually if you're doing your markets one thing to think about is the kind of change you're likely to give so if you've got um, whole numbers so I used to have everything as a pound or two pounds, or ten pounds, or twenty pounds, or fifty pounds, or whatever. I didn't have to give that much change, so I have five pound notes and one pound coins. That's all I had in my in my float. But now I've put some of the prices up because prices uh, that I pay to get things delivered have gone up as well. So I've put some things up with a fifty p on the end. So now I'm going to have to have some fifty p's to give in change because there's no point in me just having pound coins and someone coming along to buy something that's two pounds fifty, and then giving me three pounds and I've got nothing to give them in change. That won't do it all. So I need to get some change. I need to get my gazebo. Um, we're really lucky this year that we've got a van, a second-hand van that we're going to convert eventually into like a camper van type thing. But it's going to be really useful to be able to take the gazebo and everything down there because I used to have to squeeze it into my old Clio. Uh, it fit, but like just not really comfortably. Um, so I need to get my gazebo from the storage. I need to get a display rack which Sheffield's makers shop in the Winter Gardens has um, kindly let me borrow uh, and he's going to collect that at the same time I need to drop off some stock there because I'm a stockist um, but before that I need to make some price labels so
So that's it guys, I've finished my market, I'm back at home and I've been thinking about some tips that I can give to you for running your own successful market stall. So here they are, my 10 tips on running your own successful market. Number one, think about your stock diversity and make sure you have enough quantity of those stocks. So when I do my market, I have a mix of stock values in my shop. So I have a mix of low range, mid range and high range items. So it gives your customer the option to, um, to sample some of your range. If they like what you do, but they can't afford your very expensive, bespoke, top range items, whatever that might be, it might be caricatures or whatever. Um, if they can't afford your top price item, give them an option to buy something of yours which is a cheaper reproduction and that they can take home. Most of my money at markets is made with these cheaper items. So I sell cards, I sell postcards, and a lot of my money is made from those low range items. Every now and then I'll sell a high range item, a £50 item, a £100 item. Very, very rarely do I ever sell a lot of those high, high range items. Mid range items, I've got to say I don't sell a lot of those. It's either high, high range or low range items, but I would recommend having a low range, mid range and high range options. Number two, think about your display. I think a lot of the most successful markets that I've seen in my time, and I've tried to emulate them myself, they have um, a kind of 3D effect going on in their market stalls. So they have some height added. Some of the less successful market stalls, and this isn't to say that if you do this, that you're not going to be successful. <laughs> this isn't to say that if you do this, that you're not going to be successful, but I think the less successful, visually appealing market stalls, are the ones that just have everything laid out flat because if you're if you think about it if you're walking past if you're just got like two minutes and you're walking up and down to see which one you're going to spend your five pounds on or whatever it is if you're just walking past from a distance you're not going to see the stock that's laid out on the tables and it's not going to look very professional so try and add some height um, and to do this I have a little tip I use my stock boxes so the, the boxes that I used to take my stock to the fair I use those as shelves I cover them with a blanket um, and I put my frames on top of those. Uh, I also have card displays, card racks, it just gets things elevated, gets things in people's line of sight as they're walking past and you're more likely to grab those people who um, want to make an impulse buy because of that and you're, if, if you don't do it you're more likely to miss those people. So number three is have a float full of change which is appropriate to your prices. So a float is basically just your your kitty of money that you can give appropriate change for. And when I say a float of change that's appropriate to your prices, I mean if you have something that ends in 99p, like 199, 299, if you don't have any pennies to give people their change, you are not going to be able to give people their change and people might not buy it. And while we're talking about money, make sure that you've got some way of just securing this float. You don't want someone to be able to just dip their hand into a jar and take all your money. So either have a locked tin or have a money belt. I like, I have a little money belt that I take. I like this, it's zippable and it means when you're packing up at the end of the day, you can keep it on you because when you're setting up and when you're packing up, they're the times that you're more likely to have thefts. I've never had any thefts, but that's because I keep my money and all of my stock within my eye line. So bear that in mind. Number four, make sure that you have enough change. Don't go thinking that everyone's gonna be really nice and pay with the exact money, because there is more people out there who will pay with a 20 pound note or a 50 pound note and will just wipe out all of your change than there are the people who'll pay with a one pound or a two pound coin, or dollars, whatever you're after. So make sure you've got enough to account for the fact that you might have to give out lots and lots of change. Also, if you have someone who is paying with a higher note, a higher bill, don't be scared to ask if they have the right change if you need it. Because more often than not, they will have the right change. They just hand you a note because they might want the change themselves. Okay, number five is prepare for rain and bad weather. And this doesn't just mean your own clothes, so it doesn't just mean 
you know, you know raincoat, <clears throat> but that as well. I mean, your gazebo or whatever is protecting you from the elements, make sure it is waterproof, make sure that it is weighed down, um, and it is really worth investing in a proper market stall gazebo. I'll put the links down below to the things that I've used. I'm not sponsored, but this is what I've found. There are loads of loads of companies out there who make market stall grade gazebos, and it really is worth doing it. And it's also worth bearing in mind that some markets and fairs <coughs> expect you to have a certain standard of gazebo so they won't let you just turn up with nothing. If you can't afford one of these gazebos yourself as they are quite expensive um, see if you can club together with some of your friends some people that you know and you can alternate or you can share a market store but even though these are a lot of money they are a really good investment and I would highly recommend it and to go alongside that make sure that you've got some way of waterproofing your stock because until you get your gazebo up if all of your stock gets water damaged, no point you being there. Number six is a really simple one, but one that many people might not think about or maybe a little bit phased about engaging with is to get a card reader. Now there are loads of companies out there who do card readers. I use iZettle, again, not sponsored. There are loads of companies, I think Square do one. Um, I can't think of any more at the moment, but do a little bit of a search on the internet and you will find loads of people who do card readers. Basically how it works is you you don't pay a monthly fee with this one. I don't know how it works with all of them, but with this one you don't pay a monthly fee. All you do is pay a percentage of each card transaction, but it's minimal. It's like pennies off each sale, but it really is worth it. The amount of sales I would have lost if I didn't have a card reader. Um, because if you think about it, how often do you walk out with change in your pocket these days? Hardly ever. And the card reader, for for the small commission that they take off each sale, it is really well and truly worth it. So I, I would recommend that. So number seven is to get a receipt book. And this goes along nicely with your card reader. So I use a duplicate book. They come in many shapes and sizes. I use a carbonless one. So I don't need a bit of paper to go in between my sheets to, to transfer it. So how it works is... So you'd write your item and your price on there and I always put my email address on top as well. The white one goes to the customer and the blue one stays with you so these are the ones that I have used today. So when I come home I know what I've sold so I can add it all up and I can put it in my business record straight away. Really really important and I think it's quite nice for customers to get a receipt because so many people don't give receipts at these market stalls and I think it's just it's an indicator that you're trustworthy you know that these people can come back to you if you if they do have a problem giving a receipt is always a good indicator of trust number eight take your own cup and lunchbox in these days of plastic waste it's really important anyway to be taking your own reusable cup for your hot drinks and your own lunchbox so you can get your own food either take drinks and food with you in these containers or take them empty and go and see if there are any local coffee shops or local cake stalls or whatever which there often are but we'll fill these up and you can help the local economy and you can have some lovely treats along the way and the bonus is that you don't have any rubbish to take home. So when you're packing up all of your cards and your stock and your market stall and you're loading it all into your car, you're worried about the rain, it's one less thing to think about what we're going to do with that rubbish. You don't need it because you haven't created it. Number nine, take a chair. Get yourself a folding chair or a camp chair, something to rest your bum on because these things, guys, are tiring my feet are aching <coughs> and while you you will have busy periods where you'll be on your feet um, you will also have those quiet periods as well and it's nice to have somewhere that you can just chill and relax and take the pressure off number 10 get a business card it's amazing the contacts that you'll make at these markets um, not just with other market stall holders but with other customers so people might not just like what you you're selling they might be interested in things that you might be able to do so commissions or other work that you do 
they might just want to follow you on social media, they might just want to find you on Instagram. And if you've got a card that's got all of those details on there, it's so much easier and so much more professional than scribbling it down on the back of, you know, whatever bit of paper that you've got in your pocket. So get yourself a card with your business name, your logo, your email address, your website if you've got one, your Instagram, your Facebook, any other social medias, any details that you think would be important and then people will be able to find you. Uh, they might even be able to give your details to other people who might be interested as well. It's amazing the contacts that I've made at these markets and the follows that I've got on my Instagram and my Facebook because of these markets. Um, and it's all down to the fact that I invested in some business cards and they're not very expensive. So that's me done. There are my 10 tips for a successful market stall. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna go and rest my voice now because I've been talking to people all day and I'm starting with a tickle. <coughs> Um, my face is aching as well with smiling at people all day. My feet are aching because I've just been on my feet all day non-stop. Um, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, a final little bit of a tip that I'm going to leave you with is if you don't make money straight away, don't be disheartened. I mean, I've done my fair share of rubbish markets where I have, where I haven't covered my pitch fee. But the more that you do, the more you'll know which markets are money makers and which ones just ditch. Um, there are quite a few which I gave them a couple of attempts to see if it was just a one-off that I didn't make any money. And after a couple of attempts where I didn't make any money, I just ditched it. I'm not gonna waste my time on those. Um, now I've just got a couple of markets that I do every year and these are the ones that I know that I'm I'm almost guaranteed to make money. I mean, you can't always say that, but um, it's trial and error. Just don't get disheartened if you don't make money on a lot of them. Um, but with those 10 tips that I've given you, hopefully that shall help you have a bit of success at these markets and just keep at it guys, keep going. Until next week then, I will leave it there. Bye bye.